Good morning and roll tide. <laughs> What oh, time oh, is it? Uh, it's um, five. It's six a.m. here. So, yeah, <laughs> Lord, where did the <laughs> night take you? <laughs> Shoot, I've been <laughs> drinking red wine with uh, just kind of hanging out, enjoying the uh, the release night. <laughs> nice and beautiful good record nice one uh in times like these where you have uh, all the sicknesses of the world coming at you you know th this is the first record in in all this period that i that i've listened to that just sounds optimistic and i was like it's so great to hear this kind of vibe <laughs> it's just amazing how did you guys do that Uh, I think we just, I think we really wanted, we needed that. We needed that record because uh, when we first started writing this record, like you said, the whole world was worried about sickness and all that stuff and the pandemic. And um, uh, we were really scared ourselves uh, at the time. Back then, you know, nobody knew anything. Everybody thought it was, you know, the end of the world or whatever. So uh, me and my two cousins, Uh, went to my garage and we set up a rehearsal space, uh, drums, bass, guitar. Yeah. And we just started getting together because the the rules back then were is like nobody could go out in public. But if you had like a, a bubble of people is what they called it. Um, it was safe. So what yeah. we did, like, okay, well, we're the bubble, you know, me and my two cousins. So <laughs> it's like, we're just going to play music in our garage. So <laughs> Um, we were just talking and we said, we were like, when we were trying to write this record, it was like, what do we want to write? And I was like, man, we got to throw on, we got to write something that you could throw on at a barbecue or a party and just, you're having beers with your friends and you put this album on and it can play from top to bottom and you can have fun and drink beer to it. And, um, so that's what we set out to write. And I think we did. Uh, But it's it's not it's not like your your last records weren't that way. You can also hang out and have a barbecue with it. Yeah, know? yeah, it's a little happier. I mean, this one's a little more uh, straight in the face, yeah. though. You know, uh, obviously, and I've I've read it now a couple of times because I read some reviews uh, uh, here in Germany, and uh, everybody it's like within the first or second phrase it's like, and there's ACDC in it. <laughs> mm. which is somehow present but it's not that it's like a copy or you sound like ACDC now now you still sound like Goodbye June but somehow this ACDC spirit and vibe comes into the music Yeah, there, there wasn't really the case before that like, like that, that obvious right right I think I think it goes back to the garage like us three is a three piece Uh, just guitar, bass, and drums. There was a, there's an energy there on how we were writing, and I think that that's uh, maybe where kind of that ACDC feeling came yeah. from. Yeah. It's just Goodbye June as as a three piece, and that's what. Um, and we and we wanted to write some big guitar riffs. We wanted to we wanted to give Landon the ability to uh, give him some space to to you know, sing some big rock songs. So that's, that's, that's what we set out to do. What is, what is, um, uh, see where the night goes. What do you think this record's going to do for you guys? Uh, that's, in, that's in, um, uh, that's in everyone else's hands except ours. That's something we can't control. So we, we just, we hope it's, uh, I mean, we love the record. Um, I mean, I think it's our best work personally as a whole cumulatively like all 11 songs together as a record yeah. uh, i'm extremely proud of it i think it's our best work as a whole and uh, i think there's some i think it's all killer no filler as they say <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny because there's a lot of bands young bands you know doing this sound uh, mostly american bands too but but You know, beat whoever, you know, starting from, uh, I don't know, uh, Blackstone Cherry to whatever you have. Mm -hmm. But do you think 
this this music and there is a lot of people who like it a lot of the young people that like it do you think it has the ability to be that mainstream again that it used to be in the 70s when it was like you know over the top big right um i think i think this this style of straight ahead rock uh, is what i would call it uh, you know it's just it's just you know it's the drum beats it, study like a train and you got big guitar riffs and you know it's not um we're not reinventing the wheel nah no nah, right really you know what i'm saying it's just it's just we, we're doing some um some moves that have been done before right but we do it our way and i think we because we put out uh records before this record that sounded way different like way more into um you know they sound like us but you know they sound like led zeppelin or blind melon or yeah you know we get those comparisons right yeah. well this yeah. record i i think i think you know since we're 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 a little older more mature songwriters uh i think we can do this acdc sound uh inspired sound but do it in a, in a new unique way that's still us so I, yeah. I mean, I think, I think good rock and roll will never die. And I think, I think people are always hungry for good, fresh rock and roll. Yeah. Nobody, nobody wants a copy of a copy. Um, you know, if you stick a copy in a copy machine and then you copy it and then you copy that again and you keep copying it by, you know, 10 copies in, you get a very ugly picture. And it's like, that's not the <laughs> point. We don't want it like that's not not what you want to do but um so yeah to answer your question man i think i think yeah people always love good rock and roll and uh we put out a good rock and roll record how long did you have to stay in your garage in order to get all those 11 songs ready <laughs> oh man we had plenty of time i don't know we, <laughs> we wasn't counting back then we wasn't counting the days it was just We were bored to death, so we were getting together all the time. <laughs> so, so you probably have a ton of songs stacked somewhere. Yeah, you make yeah. it on the record. I could show I could show you probably uh, well cumulative for our career. I would say we have at least 120 recordings of mm. finished songs. That some of them are some of them are like with a producer. You know, some of them are really <laughs> good recordings. Uh, yeah, we probably have about 120 that haven't been released. So we'll see. Your, your record company goes like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we don't we don't turn them all in, you know. So not everybody knows about them. <laughs> And this is going to be our 18th record. There's the set list. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, well, we figured when we're when we're old men, old and gray, and we're tired of writing music, we can we can go back into the archives and pick out some young sounding songs, you know. <laughs> are you guys uh well obviously here touring in europe is still uh tricky mm -hmm. at that moment but in the u.s it's already been starting and going on are you guys on the road sometime some soon uh we are we just booked uh i don't know if we've announced it yet maybe i'm announcing oh. it right now oh uh, okay oh. we're going out with uh we're going out with our friends whiskey myers and for about a month uh in april And then we're going out with our friends in a band called Bad Flower. We're doing some shows with them in March. So uh, it's starting to it's starting to gear up for us. Like uh, yeah. the phone's starting to ring, so to speak, in the United States. Now in Europe and UK, yeah. phone isn't ringing quite yeah. yet. Yeah. I, th I think, uh, you know, after this interview, it'll probably start ringing again. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, interesting because I haven't heard of the first band you're going out with, but Bad Flower, uh, we know them. And uh, it's, yeah. it's funny because to me, they seem to have a different sound than you guys. Yeah, they do. And they're, I think, I think what it is though, is um, I think we're really honest and um, straightforward in like what we do. And I think they're really honest and straightforward yeah. in what, and what they do and i think that that that's the reason why we can tour together and they're our friends and they just invited us out like hey you want to come do some shows with us and we're like sure let's do it you know <laughs> so, uh, nice so yeah. what was the hardest song to write on see where the night goes what was the trickiest one where you go like no nah, it doesn't it doesn't feel right stuff let's do it again um i think uh take a ride 
the fourth song on the record that was to me that one's a little more van halen inspired mm -hmm. um and that one was tr trickier to get to get the flow and the pieces to feel good it, yeah. it um that one was was it did what you said like we were back in the studio like man this just doesn't quite feel right yet the pulse isn't there the vibe isn't there yet so uh that one took a little bit of, of extra effort um and really other than that the record was pretty we were very well prepared we were very well yeah. rehearsed <laughs> so i think i think the record all in all took us uh less than 10 days to record whoa so we were recording more than a song a day yeah. uh, from start to finish complete. So there's, there's like some, um, a lot of one take uh, stuff happening on yeah, that's one insane. record. So like, like lots of one take guitar solos, like uh, the big guitar solo in, in the song, nothing yeah. that, was, that was like a one take um, um breathing attack that was all one take stuff we were just ready to go i was ready to go landing was ready to go brandon um, we were all ready to go so uh <laughs> yeah we just went in there and crushed it out you know you know this this uh, the whole record obviously it's so riff loaded and it's just so much fun to listen to did you how did you come up with all the stuff like was it over the years and over the, just over this period of time where you go like oh, listen to this <laughs> yeah 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 that's well that's, that's that's how it is um with me me and brandon are both always writing guitar riffs so yeah. um and then when it's time to come together it's always kind of like show and tell you know like kids sit in a circle you know at school and they like you know should bring their their wares and their toys uh same thing with us it's we all sit in the circle And we just take turns. It's like everybody plays a song and everybody like, you know, tries to impress the other guys, you know? So um, <laughs> we're all, I'm just like, Hey, check this riff out. And I play breathing attack, you know? And, and the guys are like, yeah, that's great. We're going to work on that. And then we just pick out what we want to work on that day and go and start writing songs. How disappointed is it? How disappointing is it to get turned down? Soul crushing. I have, I, I had a song, uh, I had a song, you ever heard the, you know, the drink white Russian? Yeah. Uh, right. The milk and the, I yeah. had a whole song. I had a whole song written about, uh, drinking white Russians that I thought was just incredible. I thought it was the best song I've ever written and the guy <laughs> and, and our producer. And I, and I took it, I even went behind their back and showed our producer and, uh, I was like, dude, you don't like this song. And I play it for him. And he's like, no. <laughs> i was like oh man so uh I'll, i'll maybe i'll put out a you know 10 years from now I'll put out a little solo record and, uh, <laughs> you'll see white a, a song of, a bad song about white <laughs> <Russians> on it. <laughs> it's always the same he's going i'm going solo then <laughs> yeah right i'm going solo guys <laughs> i'm gonna sing my bad song somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, it's cool, man. We all have a great respect for each other, and um, and I trust him. So, and I trust uh, our producer Paul Moak. Um, when we're all sharing our music, if somebody's not digging something, you, it's it's you gotta swallow your pride and say, okay, they're hearing something I don't. So, yeah. just like well, and the the example, another example is the opposite of that, where I had a song three chords. I wrote it about Landon and uh, Landon's grandpa. And I, I had never really done that before. And I was sure everyone was not going to like that song. Yeah. And um, so I played three chords for everybody and not the whole thing, but I played, you know, the verse and the chorus. And I was like, yeah, it's just called three chords because I think, you know, I'm just going to play three chords in it. And then, you know, I'm going to tell this storytelling song And I was sure that no one was going to like it. They were going to love white Russian. They were not going <laughs> to like it. And uh, everybody was like, dude, three chords might be a single. And I was like, no way. Really? And so you just got to trust your, you got to trust your friends, you know, you trust your family. Uh, that is fucking great. Yeah. Well, um, 
there's three chords, then there's a, a step aside. What's, uh, what's the story behind step aside? Mm, step aside was really a, a group effort. I wrote, I went up to visit my parents and they live uh, way out in the country in Indiana. Oh, and, yeah. um, and um, I wrote the, uh, the verse riff, you know, the, the finger picking verse riff. And I wrote uh, the first verse. And that's all I had. And I brought it into the studio on um, one of the first days that we all got together, that we knew we were going to make a record together, but we still didn't know what the songs were. And I had yeah. brought that, I had brought that riff in and Brandon had um, an old warm up riff that he, he had used for years to warm up at soundcheck. Yeah. Like, like when we play concerts, he had this one riff, he played it for years and um, we didn't have a chorus yet. And uh, I don't know who came up with the idea. Um, I think I was like, dude, Brandon, can we use your warm up riff? And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, the warm up riff, man. And he's like, this one. And like, and then it was, like, it was the chorus. And, uh, and so we just all put it together and our producer and Landon, they, they ran with the lyrics, the rest of the lyrics. And, um, It was such a great community, communitive effort, community, community effort. Yeah, yeah. most like a collective effort or something. Collective, it's better, way better, way better word. Uh, so oh. yeah, so, it's, so step aside was more of a a, a true group effort, and um, and that has a little piece of all of us in it. And I think you know it's. So far, we'll see how the record develops. But um, man, Step Aside has went crazy on the um, streaming services and like Apple Music and Spotify. Yeah. It's like it's like our biggest streaming song. Like it's overtaken all of our other singles uh, right away too. Yeah. And so I think that's really cool. Like I think that that's that means that that song, and I think that means this record, the sound of this record has um, a. I don't know, really, um, people are hungry for it. Yeah, so, most deaf, most deaf. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just, as I said, it's just great to hear something optimistic because all, all the other stuff you hear is either dark mm -hmm. or aggressive. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's not the same anymore. I need yeah. to get out of this pandemic stuff. But you guys, and I haven't seen this one because I don't know, I don't really know if it's available over here, but you guys have a documentary out. Mm -hmm. which seems yeah. to be really, really interesting, pretty interesting. Is that just in the movies or is it just how, somehow available through streaming? Yeah, you, you can look it up on YouTube. It's called Three Cousins, The Goodbye June Story. Yeah. And uh, it's just a mini doc, uh, mini doc that we did. It's about 15, 15, 20 minutes long. And it just, it's just kind of a snapshot of us and it's a history of us and it's where we come from. And just a brief story about, kind of our journey, you know, th with music and through life. And then um, deep dives a little bit into each one of our uh, upbringings, like how we got into music. And then it just uh, talks about the record and like how the record came about. So it's like 15 minutes. It's really cool. I'm super proud of it. Uh, we went in, um, we were really just started film. We were wanting to film a promo video for the new record. Mm -hmm. And it ended up turning into this documentary where we're on canoes, like on the river talking about growing up and like, it just, it turned into a documentary, which was really cool. Are you, are you guys uh, hailing directly from Nashville? No, um, Landon and Brandon are, uh, they moved around a lot growing right. up because their parents were evangelists. And All right. uh, so they moved around a lot, like it, like Atlanta, West Tennessee, um, they were in Indiana for a little while. So kind of the South, um, the South slash Midwest. Midwest you know, yeah. I was in Indiana the whole time. So oh, all right. we met in Nashville in 2009. Okay. Yeah. Great. So how about them Titans? Uh, <laughs> man, our boy, our running back Henry, man. Like, yeah. Uh, He's a Bama boy. I'm a boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, I see that t-shirt, man. Oh, I just kind of puke in my mouth a little bit every time. Roll Tide. Like, every time you <laughs> lean back and I see the Crimson Tide, I'm kind of like kind of vomit in my mouth a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> so if, I make, if I make a weird face, that's why. Don't worry. We'll get, we'll get you another SEC championship. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, you will. I'm sure you will, man. 
it's there Bama's tough, but uh <laughs> I am gonna tell you right now, I'm not a big fan of Bama. So <laughs> Well, I couldn't have guessed no. Hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you gotta be from Alabama to be a Bama fan. Or apparently Germany is is it big in Germany? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's Alabama. in Germany. But I went to school there. I went to to the university. Oh, okay, 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 okay. There you go. That, that's All how. Right. <laughs> All right, I'll cut you a little slack then. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, I went to I went to Indiana, Hoosiers, IU. Oh, do you do you? What's that? Pac-10, Big Sky. What's no, that no, conference? No, no, come on, that's Big Ten, man. <laughs> Oh, all right. They're still there too. Yeah, all right. Oh, yeah. I forgot about those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now when basketball season rolls around, you don't forget about us, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> the last, the last, very last question. What would be your favorite band to tour with? Hmm, that's a great question. Really good question. You're saying uh, favorite Whatever. band? I've ever- Whatever. Ah. Uh, I mean, this is maybe this is too on the nose, but I, lo- I mean, I would love to tour with ACDC. My God, it'd be an honor to tour with ACDC. <laughs> hey, man, I'll tell you what, though, I've gotten a chance to tour ZZ Top, and that was a dream come true, too. So I would have done I tell you something, it's, it's really ridiculous, but it's a true story. I mm-hmm. opened up for ACDC once. Uh, not, not for ACDC, I'm sorry. I opened up for CC Top and for Kiss. What? That's As a awesome. DJ. They looked. They were looking for somebody from from the radio station who presents the show. They go, like, "You you want you want to play half an hour set before CC Top?" <laughs> we're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah of, course you do. <laughs> of course you. What do you do? Like you like a DJ? Like like yeah, yeah. It's just a DJ set, and there's like five thousand people staring at you, not wanting to see you. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not amazing. Really, not really into a DJ, are they? At that point, <laughs> I don't know why they did it. It was like the. The tour was like seven or eight years ago, even nine years. And I don't know why they didn't have a support band. It was the same here in Munich. It was the same in Hamburg. They had a different DJ there. And, you know, nobody cares, but it was fun for us. We're like on yeah. stage. We're like, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get on stage and dance a little bit. <laughs> Shoot, dude. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but ACDC, well, chances are not too, too bad, actually. I mean, they're going to go on tour. They had, you know, they had, What was the, the one band they had on the European tour? A whole European leg, an Irish band. Two, two great records, not that known. I don't know how. You know, it's just chances yeah. are there. It's funny. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. You might, uh, old Angus might hear the, might hear the uh, guitar riffs and say, hey, I want this guy to open for me, you know? <laughs> never know. Could happen. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, it was nice talking to you. I got no more further questions, Your Honor. All right. Well, and I hope to see you soon over here, obviously. All right. Let me be dismissed. I'm going to go back to bed. (laughs) 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 Talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you all for spinning the record and uh, thank you for supporting Goodbye June. Uh, you can check us out on the website and check us out on earache.com backslash Goodbye June and uh, just uh, hit us on socials. We're, we're on there. We're, we're uh, always checking it. So, so if you want to talk to us, hit us up on there. All right. Nice one. Uh, yeah. Good night, Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. Good night. <laughs> Bye, my friend. 